support. See, the fact that he goes up to this guy with the drawn sword, he understood he wasn't by himself. He understood there, that there were probably a million plus people looking at him and, and, and having his back. Look at the person next to you. That person has your back. That, that's your brother. That's your sister in the Lord. Yeah, but you know, sometimes we're not as close. Well, then you make the effort. You make the effort to connect with, with other people because brothers and sisters, the way we grow is by being in fellowship with one another. Just, just as a, a charcoal briquette, how many folks like to barbecue, right? Now we use gas and, and so forth, but you know, when, when, when you use briquettes, you've got to have all those in one pile. You've got to have them all touching one another. Only then can they stay hot. Only can you stay on fire for God. The only time you can is when you're connected with another brother or sister in Christ. You've got to be in fellowship. That's why Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, allow me to read that to you. <clears throat> Hebrews 10, 24. It says, And let us consider how we may spur one another toward love and good deeds. Let us not, giving up, let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day, capital D, approaching. That's why church, Bible study, getting together with other Christians, for the sake of mutual edification, no other motive or reason, just to, to be edified or to edify somebody, is so important and so vital. It helps us to face the enemies of our life in Jesus' name. You and I were meant to engage let me say this. You and I were not meant to engage the Christian life alone. We're supposed to be doing this together. Amen? Amen. We're supposed to be doing this together. Right? Because if you get around a group of people who have the same focus as you, some of the, some of the same goals, spiritually speaking, you both will get there together a lot quicker than if you stayed at home. Amen? Amen. And, and, and you know, I'm not just saying this because I'm pastoring this church. I grew up in the Lord with this. I, I went to a church. If I didn't go to that church, probably not many people would know this because it was just so large and multiple services and anything. This, this church, if, I know exactly who's not here today. <laughs> I, I know. And I, I know when you're not here. Believe me, I know. Ask my wife. But regardless of the church you're going to, you are needed in that church. Your gifts, your talents, and so forth. Uh, they're, they're supposed to be expressed within that fellowship. Amen? Amen? Amen. Very important. Very vital. Let me say in conclusion, and again, we're going to continue this next week. Sometimes we are too passive when it comes to advancing the kingdom of God in our lives and in this world. We act like kitty cats when we should be acting like lions. Amen? Amen. You ever get close to a lion? Careful, careful. The Bible calls us lions. The Bible also says the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, but we're lions too, and we got Jesus living on the inside of us, and we're, we're more hungry than the enemy is, so we're stronger, okay? So we'll win the fight, we'll win the battle. Sometimes we, we wait for God. We're waiting for God to do something when in reality, He's waiting for us. We have the tools and resources and, and weapons to advance, but we take a back seat and just cower. I say today, rise up, church, in the name of Jesus. Take up sword and shield and go for it. How, however that works out in your life, whatever that means to you, go for it. Go for it. The good land is promised to us but it will go to our enemies if we refuse to take it by holy force. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now, the question in your notes is, what opportunities do you have to apply this message in your life? What opportunities, what things do you have to confront in your life? And, and believe me, you know, we, we talked about prayer today. Uh, Brother Duke talked about it. And I was talking about prayer with my brother Keith today. There were some things that I was anxious for this week, actually two of them. And 
You know, I'm still learning this stuff too. You do realize that, right? Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything instead, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then the peace of God that, that transcends all understanding will guard your, your cortisone, right? Your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I started to do that with those two issues that I was anxious about. I released a prayer of faith. I don't know if it was ferocious or not, but I released this prayer of faith. I prayed. I don't always pray for things. Sometimes I just allow things to just floor me. But in this, this circumstance this week, I prayed for those two things. And those things went off without a hitch. Praise God. Okay? So confront those issues in your life with prayer, with faith, and you'll see the difference. Jot down what in your life, what... Uh, obstacle in your life you're going to confront with, with the principles that you learned today. Then turn with me to Hebrews uh, chapter 10, verse 39. And this is a memory verse for you and I. Are you game for a memory verse? Okay. This is Hebrews chapter 10 in the New Testament. I'm going to start with verse 35. That's not the memory verse, but... He says, do not throw away your confidence or your faith. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. Hebrews 10, now verse 37. For in just a very little while, He who is coming will come. Who's that? Christ Jesus. And will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. Verse 39. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. Take that verse to memory. If you want to memorize that whole portion, that's great. That's extra credit. But the assignment is to memorize Hebrews 10, 39. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but those who believe and are saved. Can you say that with me? But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. Amen? If I've learned one thing, I've learned that God is not pleased when I shrink back. He wants me to, to advance in Jesus' name. And Father God, we thank you.